Sal and Mike here today. By, back by popular demand, we want to talk a little bit about some nutritional trends. You guys enjoyed the video going over the fitness trends on the internet. Today we're going to cover some of the nutritional trends done by an article that I googled. I used to Google, uh, looked about five different articles and a lot of them had common themes. So we're going to go over some of those, give you some of my thoughts, uh, some of the information that I know from science and some of my information over the 10 years I've spent in the industry working with people uh, and doing research and things. But before we get started, before we dive into the fitness trends, be sure to follow me, Silent Mike 2 ks on Instagram and Twitter. Be sure to follow me on Twitch. We're streaming every Monday through Friday, Silent M-I-K-K-E number two. You'll find it. And be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Let's hop in the video. First nutritional <laughs> trend is inflammation, which isn't a tr nutritional trend, but it says <clears throat> this trend is, is, is in an expansion of the antioxidant trend of the past years. Chronic inflammation continues to be linked to development of many diseases, making foods with omega-3 fatty acids, uh, polyphenols from fruits and vegetables and functional ingredients like turmeric strong players. Now I have uh, mixed feelings on the idea because people throw around buzzwords and terms like inflammation and that's why maybe keto talks about oh it helps inflammation and it helps bloating and it helps people use these buzzwords to try to make false arguments for their cup of tea, for their style of diet, for their supplement so they can show you new supplements and new turmeric pills to help uh, uh, potentially with nothing but help their bank account go through the roof so they can buy their new Rari and flex on Instagram. So be sure to buy Kaizen new turmeric supplement coming soon. Um, so inflammation in a healthy individual, we have to define what are these conversations for because I do think there's some applications for different supplements or even uh, medications or something like a keto diet for someone with a perhaps a, a disease, an immune disease or something of that nature where they may have inflammation beyond um, what's normal or average. But for the average human, that's trying to, um, that's in a healthy body weight, healthy body fat percentage, gets some exercises, eats a good amount of fruits and vegetables and has no diseases, um, your body will handle its own inflammation. Now, getting some extra antioxidants in will never hurt. Uh, certain supplements like turmeric and those may never hurt. They're not gonna work a negative if you're taking normal doses. Um, but I think if you have your fruits, veggies, regular exercise, your body fat levels are, are normal enough and you don't have any diseases to begin with, we don't really have to worry about inflammation. When people talk about that thing, things hurting or feeling bloated, that's probably because they're not drinking enough water. Maybe they're too carb heavy in their diet, um, too salt heavy potentially. High, high amounts of salt, carbs, and lower water can make you retain a little bit of water because um, your body's holding on to it. So you may feel bloated, but that's not actually inflammation and the inflammation itself, our bodies are amazing machines and they'll mostly deal with it itself. Again, getting some polyphenols and some of these uh, extra things involved won't necessarily hurt, but for the healthy individual um, with healthy eating habits and exercise habits, those aren't probably things we have to worry about too much. They're often just buzzwords for people to sell and shell out things. Digestive wellness. Digestive wellness is propelled by new ingredients and backed by emerging science. The desire by consumers to feel benefits from food they eat creates a strong consumer demand for this category. Uh, foods that can help reduce feelings of gas, bloating, or more severe gastrointestinal symptoms are the folks in this trend. Uh, and I think they're di diving into you know probiotics, prebiotics, uh, kombucha, things of, things of that nature. Uh, and I do think that's something that can help a lot of people. When we look at the body's anatomy, we almost have two insides or two outsides. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna explain this well, but we obviously have the outside of our body, our skin in these things, and then we have our digestive system, which is in a way not really in our body, right? Because it has to pass through that wall to get into our blood flow or into our blood, veins, and our system. So uh, we have the health that we have to take care of there. And um, I do think some pro probiotics and things um, will uh, not only continue to trend, the science will continue to keep up, but I do think there is definitely ways um, that that can help us considering the average human diet. Um, because of that, you know, a lot of people are eating processed foods that maybe not have um, the normal properties that our body's used to digesting, such as, again, fiber, fruits, veggies, uh, the more normal things. In the normal individual, do we really have to focus on these things? Probably not, but digestive wellness, I, I do think is something uh, that will perhaps last. There'll be new science on it, uh, and I do think that uh, everybody can kind of get involved a little bit, especially if you do have moderate amounts of kind of that junk food or things that uh, may not uh, digest properly. Again, if you feel more bloated, I liked how they worded this one compared to the one above. They worded it more normal. These foods can help reduce the feeling of gas, bloating, gastrointestinal issues. I think that's uh, number one in everyone's life. If you can feel a little bit better, if it feels it helps you, drinking more water feels, makes you feel less bloated, uh, then by all means do it rather than actually like, you will lose inflammation, you will lose bloating, you will lose fat off your waist by eating probiotics. I don't really like that, but if you feel better, drink a little kombucha here and there, by all means hit after it. 
Here's the one y'all been waiting for, all you keto fiends. Sugar. Sugar has been the main nutritional target in foods and beverages for the years, and this trend will only continue public health recommendation and tax legislation are driving reduction in tax and sugar content of foods across all categories. Now, you guys know me. I'm, 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 I'm pretty uh, uh, down the road guy. I like to think of things logically. Sugar is something that um, in moderation will not kill you. You know, if you're eating your fruits and veggies, if you're getting your micronutrients, if your macronutrients, your overall calorie intake is under control, your body fat's under control, you exercise a little bit, you get the fiber intake you need, sugar is almost a non-factor and there's tons of science to back this up. So um, I don't really like that pop culture and the media are making sugar the devil. I think in America, you know, we have to make these conversations with context. Um, if you're eating, a bunch of processed foods over and over. Yes, sugar probably is too accessible for some people, but sugar isn't the issue. The issue is the people not being educated on the content that is within the foods that they're eating. We need to educate people on the nutritional content. That's why I'm a big proponent of people tracking their food straight for a year, just to understand what types of food have what in it, rather than saying sugar is bad, don't eat sugar. People are like, okay, sugar bad, sugar bad, sugar good, sugar bad, protein good. Why don't we just educate these people on what's actually happening in the content within the food that they're eating, and then they can make the decisions for themselves. But I think people are unaware of the amount of sugar that they're eating or what foods even have sugar, protein, or fat in them, and so they just eat blindly. Let's educate people. I think that's more of an answer than taxing sugar foods or, or probiotic this and inflammation that, all these buzzwords. Let's educate people. Let's share knowledge. Let's track our food. Let's have an idea. You know, there is nutrition classes in high school and stuff, but they just barely touch the surface. We need to pay more attention to that here in America. I don't think we need to regulate the types of foods that are available because it's fine to have in moderation some kind of junk foods or more processed foods because that's part of our culture. That's people having fun. They taste delicious and I absolutely love them is another reason. Um, but I think people just need to be more aware of it and learn to moderate it themselves, have a little bit of self-control, a little bit of willpower. <laughs> Beverages redefined. One of the main victims of the crusade against sugar, nutrition, innovation is for beverages is a way to drive that category. Drinks fit a convenient niche that is able to customize with nutritious ingredients in ways some foods can't be. Functional beverages like kombucha, ready to drink caffeinated drinks like coffee and tea and protein drinks are in some areas innovation. The ability of incorporating protein, fiber, whole grains, and fruits and vegetable servings will link this. Uh, so I think the trend they're talking about is maybe just more convenient drinks that are maybe quote unquote healthier, um, which I can't really make an argument for or against. I think, you know, I, overall, I guess I could make one against it just because people, again, aren't educated on the calorie intake that they're having. And if people are drinking calories, they're less likely to eat them and they're more likely to overeat on their daily calorie requirements if you're drinking a bunch of stuff because you don't really always get full. Um, but personally, one of my favorite things, I talk about this in a lot of vlogs, is like gas stations. I love going to a gas station seeing all the new drinks, whether it is like a probiotic or whether it is like a caffeine energy drink or a coffee blend or whatever. I don't know why I love all that shit. Um, I do think it's cool that health is kind of a trend right now. I just think that we need to redefine health uh, and start educating people rather than just focusing in on making health products and putting buzzwords on, a, on them. But I do like that the mass market is making more um, conscious and health cool. Personalization and fragmentation. The personalized nutrition movement is one mostly driven by advancement in technology, in many cases just waiting for science to catch up. Come on, that's buzzy. We don't like that bullshit. Technologies ranging from wearable fitness trackers to DNA and microbiome testing will drive demand for nutrition tailored for specific individuals. It is the concept of bringing what dietitians have been doing for years to the mainstream. So again, I think we need to find what a normal, healthy human is and someone with an issue. I think if you do have some kind of immune issue or disease or, or, or some kind of um, something that's not normal, you do need that super attentive nutritionist or dietitian to help your needs with your vitamins, minerals, your fiber, your daily intakes. But the average human, you know, uh, it, it's gone back and forth, right? I don't, there's nothing wrong with like cookie cutter. For the average person, a training program that is progressive overload with some periodization and good progression is gonna work for the masses. Um, there's some methodologies and some principles in both nutrition, lifting, life, business that sure work better for other, some than others, but will work for everyone. It's just, it's just how it goes. We're, we're, we're not little snowflakes you think. Again, if you have a disease, if you have something hormonally actually wrong, if you have some of these issues, yes, you probably need a little bit more one-on-one uh, -on -one attention, but for the masses, um, 
I disagree. I disagree with that. I, I think it's cool that technology, again, is, is trending and, and fitness is trending and people are, are getting more into it, wearing this thing. Oh, I, I you know, I, I just heard some, we were at a, a party at a friend's house and we were watching UFC and a bunch of the people were talking about doing like sled drags and they're not power lifters. I was like, that's pretty cool. So I think it's cool these things are, are trending, but I think we still need to define and educate uh, the masses with them rather than just exposing them to them. We're exposing more people to health and all these buzzwords, but we need to educate them on it. <laughs> Plant-based. Eating more plant-based foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and nuts have long been the hardest part of a dietary recommendation for many of us to adhere to. The presence of this uh, trend seems to, uh, on the list signifies that food technology innovations have found ways to help plant into our daily tasty, convenient ways. Um, I think that's fine and dandy. You know, I don't like the term plant-based because I think you automatically switch to vegan, but I do think there's a lot of merit uh, and a lot of good things that happen with fruits, veggies, uh, and some fibrous carbs. Sure. Here's another one. Moving on. Good carbs, bad carbs. Carbohydrates have been the target of many diets in the past few decades as a strategy to reduce overall calorie intake. Many of these diets focus on shifting intake from bad carbs, often referring to sugar or starches with minimal other nutritional value to good carbs like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes. Fiber is often a key differentiator in the good carb, bad carb conversation. This article is weird. I don't even know where I am. I don't want to shout them out even if I did, but like half of them I feel are so buzzwordy and pop media and then half of them are uh, kind of spot on and this one seems pretty spot on um, I don't know what the trend is good carb versus bad carb I think moderation again as we always talk about if you have your overall calories in check you have your macronutrients in check you have your fiber and micronutrients in check you're getting plenty of vitamins and minerals then I think having some bad carbs or non-nutritional carbs having a Twinkie here and there is not gonna uh, be the end of your diet or the end of the day again controlling body fat percentage while getting your micronutrients in with some uh, uh, regular exercise are the keys to being healthy. That's it. If you have excess body fat, you're not getting your micronutrients in and you're not exercising, that's highest chance to get unhealthy. If you do some of those or more of those more common, you have the best chance to get healthy. So control your body fat percentage, get some micronutrients in, exercise, best way to be healthy in my opinion. Protein. Trend is protein, baby. And I do agree, again, going back to my common theme here that the masses are talking like protein. At least people know that they need protein. Um, and it doesn't have to be two times your body weight in protein grams like some of these bodybuilders used to say, but getting more protein than the average person does is probably good. With the pendulum swinging from the anti-fat in the 70s and 80s and to anti-sugar, consumers look to replace these nutrients with something positive. Protein continues to serve this need due to its association with improving lean body mass, reducing hunger between meals, and the sportification trend. I do agree, uh, and I think uh, there's nothing bad with that, uh, as long as, again, we have to focus on the micronutrients and the overall calories. Snackification, one of my favorite topics. The fragmentation of meal times due to busy lifestyles has led to much more of our daily eating occasions being snacks instead of sit down meals. This means nutrition for meal times now needs to be provided in convenient snackable formats. The biggest opportunities here are to deliver on trends like sugar, protein, and plant based is convenient and nutritious ways, innovations. I don't know if that's a trend or not. I do think that a little bit where you're buying a, you know, a shake on the go or a protein bar on the go, and I think that's all fine and dandy. Again, I, I don't like these trends in the terms of the exposure. I think we need to educate and less exposure. Let's educate, not expose. We need to educate people on, again, I think if you're snacking too often is an easy way for people to overeat on their calories or even the sugar, the fat, or, the, or the, even the protein. But if we educate people on, on good snacks, making a better choice, um, when they can go out to eat or when they are doing something convenient. I think you can go to a gas station, even though sometimes it's a little more expensive, and you can get uh, you know, some beef jerky, a little protein bar, and a little coffee drink that overall fits most people's diets plans and most people's dietary needs. Uh, but I do agree that the pace of life right now is a little bit different. The family, not to get too deep here, uh, the family orientation here in America is a little bit different. Not everyone's having breakfast, lunch, and dinner together, or even just dinner together. So people are snacking, they're going on the go, which I think is fine. Busy lifestyles um, is what you kind of need to keep up in today's economy, and that's a whole other different topic for a different day, but having more readily healthy uh, snacks is something cool that's happening. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video again. A little bit of fitness trends covering it, my ideas, my thoughts. 2018 fitness trends. I'm Solid Mike. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Solid Mike with two Ks. Follow me on Twitch, baby. Links in the bio. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. New videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Maybe we're going five days a week. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. See you guys there. See you on Twitch every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days a week.